Welcome along to a video presentation of basics of using SharePoint. My name is Robert Crane. My email address is director at ciaops.com and my business is at www.ciaops.com. So I'd like to thank you for coming along to this webinar and let's get started. So to start off with, let's just have a look at a bit of housekeeping. Um, if you want to provide any feedback, please do via Twitter. The hashtag for this webinar will be hash CIAOps. So please put any comments, feedback in there and I can then deal with that at a later stage. If you do wish to want to follow my Twitter handle, you'll find that at Director CIA. That will give you information about what's going on with future webinars as well as what's happening with SharePoint. I'll also provide an information guide at the end of the session and there'll be information on how you can um, obtain that at the end of the session. So the agenda for today is we'll have a look at document libraries, web pages, lists and wikis, discussions and surveys, web parts and subsites, search and then we'll have a look at some conclusions. So without further ado, let's now get into the actual demonstration of um, SharePoint. So let me just flick across to the SharePoint site. Okay, so what you can see here is basically Windows SharePoint version 3. I've done some minor modifications to the front page, but basically what you see is SharePoint by default is something that you access through a web browser. So I've just gone to a web browser page here and this has now brought it up. As you can see the page basically consists of text, image as well as links that I can click on um, to go to any location. Down the left hand side of the screen you'll see what's known as the quick launch bar. So from here I can get to a whole range of features and items within my site. So for example, if I want to have a look at a calendar, I can just simply click on that link. I will then be taken to that area. I'll just note that this presentation, um, this SharePoint machine is currently on a virtual machine, which means it's a machine running a machine. So if it is a bit slow, please um, bear with me um, because I've tried to get all the software onto a single machine for this demo. So again, um, a basic web page, you've got the quick start menu down the left hand side that gives you a link to any location on your site. You've also noticed a number of tabs across the top here, so again these can be different areas that we can access. You'll notice that um, we also have something called uh, what's known as breadcrumb navigation. So if I go into my policies area, uh, my document library, you'll notice across the top here, see this breadcrumb, so this allows me as I drill into the areas of SharePoint, I'll see this breadcrumb trail increase and increase. That means that I can easily jump backwards and forwards to any location via this breadcrumb crumb navigation. So again, what you'll notice is also that because I'm logged in as the administrator, um, which is noted up here, as you can see every time somebody logs into the site, um, their securities will determine what they can and can't see. So at this point in time I'm logged in as the SharePoint Administrator and you'll notice that an extra tab has appeared here called Site Actions. This allows me as an administrator to go in and create pages, edit pages and look at the site settings of the uh, SharePoint site. You'll also notice that these little tabs here allow me to go in and make modifications, close and export. Again, this facility is only available to those that you choose to have access within SharePoint. So the other important thing to notice, which is the difference between version 3 and version 2, is down the bottom here you'll see that we have a recycle bin. So again, much like your desktop uh, recycle bin. This basically means that if a user deletes something by mistake, it will then be sent to the recycle bin. If the user then chooses to delete it from their recycle bin, it actually goes to an administrator's recycle bin where an administrator can recover the information. So again, think of it as a two-stage recycle bin. So again, once a user deletes something, it goes to their recycle bin. 
from their recycle bin once it's deleted it then ends up in an administrator recycle bin and in both instances it can be retrieved um, as required. Okay, so that's just a basic overview of the front page here. So let's actually go in and start showing you what SharePoint's all about. So probably the most common feature that SharePoint's used for is for document management. Documents are held in an area called document libraries and these are typically found under the documents option on the quick start menu. So I've created a document library called policies. So to get access to this I simply click on that and I can now see all the files in this document library. So again, I have, they have a title, the type, so I've got Word documents as well as PDF documents, the actual document name, when it was modified, and who modified it, as well as its approval status, which I'll come to at a later stage. So again, if I want to upload a document, all I need to do is simply go up here and select Upload. I'm then asked to browse to um, the location for a file. So in this case, I'm just going to pull it from a directory on my machine. So I'm going to upload this Excel file called Shopping List. Now what I can do here is I can add comments here to the version. So I then I upload my document. You'll see that in a few moments, I'm now asked to enter a title um, because this is a requirement of this document library. So again, I'm going to upload the document and you'll notice that I'm actually in fact checking it in. So again, SharePoint can act, can work as a basic document library, uh, sorry, as a basic document management system. This means I have the ability to check in and check out documents as well as handle versions. So again, now we see that our shopping list has appeared in our library. You can see that the name that we gave it, given it has appeared, the icon, and again the time and the date that we clicked it, uh, that we uploaded it in. Now what we can do, for example, if I want to open a document or work on a document, all I do is simply go to the document name, click on it, and it will launch the application to load that document. Now the application to actually read that document or work on that document has to be on the machine that you're using. So I now have to log in because I'm not on a domain. If I was connected to SharePoint on a, in a network, in a business network, it would automatically recognise me as being logged in.